Hey, what is up everyone? It is Friday, June 7th, and the markets are closed. So I want to give a quick update on what I've been doing with my trading, because yes, I have still been trading. It's just I haven't been doing any YouTube videos just because I got tired of doing them. But in the last one I talked about, I was starting on the goal of trying to double my account from $4,000 to $8. And the good news for me is I have been able to do that in fact I did it here let's see if you can see that yeah so I did it here the other week and then just today I had a really nice trade in the Dow Jones clo closed so currently at $92,074 and then so that when I get the overnight the AMP account statement comes in I'll probably do another video here talk about some other stuff and just to show that hey there's the you know official account balance that AMP sends out because they're my futures uh, trading broker and so that's where I'm currently at right now. Probably a little bit less because I'll take out commissions for it, but it's going to be you know around, probably around 92, 70 ish, something like that. But yeah, so that's that's where it's at. So now the goal is trying to end of the year when I hit that eight thousand dollars. Now in the next six months um, is trying to get to sixteen thousand. So that's going to be the next step and try to do that. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. So. It, all this is is the ABCD trades. Uh, I mean, it's all for the ones I'll go over here. It's all the same. How they work, how it works, is you can see my other videos. It hasn't changed at all. Let me just scroll over here. It's just you look for an ABCD. There you see the semaphore, orange ones, ABCD. Then when price closes above the blue. The shift pitchfork right there, that line, I think the what the levels I have for shift 1.146 and 3.618. So when price closes above the 1.146, the blue line for the shift pitchfork. The original goal is the white line up here. That obviously didn't happen. So we just take the low to high from the Fibonacci level and when price hits the 23.6, then the exit moves to the Fibonacci level 1.146. But if price comes down and hit the 50%, then the exit moves to the closing bar high, which would be right there. But that never got hit for that exit. Then when price hit the 1.146 the opposite way, then we move price, the final exit, to the 23.6 level, and it doesn't move from there no matter how far it goes. And as you see, this one has been a crazy one, but one thing you'll find out, or if I found out, is that the lower time frames you go, you know, the one minute, five minute, or tick, I would do tick charts, but AMP doesn't, um, oh, I'm sorry, not AMP, um, TradingView doesn't offer tick charts like NinjaTrader does, that's one of the two big drawbacks for using trading view one they don't do tick charts and two you, they don't have enable you like if you trade multiple contracts you can't say you have three contracts you can't put a limit order in to get out a different price for one of, for one of those three contracts they make you get out all at once and so that's just i've asked them why and they've never responded so it's just another drawback from um that trading view has for it but the, those are the two main negatives it'd be easy for them to program and fix but some reason they won't so who knows but anyways, it's a little tangent. But so price went all the way back down. I got in right here at the 4.236, then 6.85, then find the 11.89. because I hadn't seen price go below that. And of course, what does it do? It goes down to the 17.89 Fibonacci extension level. That's where it found the bottom for it. For the next two days before it started, it's, it's trend going back up. And then if, even if we put the uh, some trend lines on it right here, like there's an overall trend right there. There's kind of one right there. We see price is just bouncing around, going up right there. Um, but what happens today is, let me hide this one real quick. Oh, that's not right. Where's the hide? There it is. So the reason why I got out earlier than the exit, which is that green line right there, the bottom of that green line, is is getting in a good profit level for me and one thing i was looking for is if you take the previous day's highs and lows the fibonacci 1.146 the 1.146 each way the high and the low a lot of the times when price hits those levels you'll get a reversal uh, to it so when price came out there was news that came out about unemployment and then we had the big sell-off it hit right down to extension low of the day and then rocketed right back up so when i saw it going up i adjusted my exit down to right here because a lot of times if you get a extension to extension day right there it's just going to end up muddling around after that and i figured that's close enough to the hard exit right there where if i do get lucky and price does retrace back down i can get back in and just miss out on a little bit of profit and so fortunately that's what ended up happening price got out got out right there at 39 Ninety-nine thousand one hundred twenty-seven, 
and then we've had to sell off there ever since. So when the markets open back up on Sunday afternoon, oh, it's gracious, it's loud. Um, I'm going to get back in right around here because I can see it's hitting off the 6.85 level right there. And then if price, But if price continues to go back down, I'll get in again right down there at level 0.89. And then if price continues to go down again to the 17.89 level, I'll get down. I'll go long down there as well. So that's uh, my plan for the Dow Jones here moving up. Now for the S&P 500 currently in this one. The X we have down here is the 23.6 level. So same setup. This is just a short trade for it. And I have actually gotten shorted right here at 53.11.50 down to 52.59 and got out there. Because a lot of times I'll get out around the 50% level for it because I've seen it bounce around some. So fortunately you got right there. Got short right here, and as you see, it's gone away from me, which this happens the way I trade. I'm used to holding on to big losses for it turns around. The goal is to, or the the kind of strategy is to get in at decent level. So I normally don't get in until at least the 1.146 level, and then don't add on too many contracts um, too soon. So I would not be looking at getting in until probably price is closer to the 4.236 for a second contract. Uh, but the X remains the same as this green line um, right down there and then lastly for the Russell 2000 and also this is what I like that so now I'm going to go long in Dow Jones and then short in the S&P 500 so whichever way the market moves it's going to go and get me out of one of these one of these markets it's either going to you know have a good move down and get me out here for the S&P 500 or and or and it'll help me get in at better prices for the Dow Jones or price is going to go back up and um, when I get in this trade and get, get me out of that trade for a profit and potentially enable me to get in for another contract or two in the SP500 minis for um, another uh, better price for that. And then here for the Russell 2000, same thing. I got in down here around the 2.618. I will not be looking at getting in until, again, until price comes down closer to the 6.85 level, just because we are in, I'll zoom out here a little bit, longer time frame. We do have a short trade right here using the ABCD trade setup right there with the target being 1,926. So if this is actually the move that's happening right here, that we're getting that move back down to here right there, I'd rather wait a little bit and get in um, right here with my second contract and then perhaps wait and get in for a third contract all the way down here around the 11.9 level, um, all the way down there. So that's why I'm not looking at getting in for a second contract for the Russell 2000, just trying to play it somewhat safe as far as the amount of contracts I get in on these. And then, all right, let's so let's talk about Chevron. I've got to talk about Chevron and Bitcoin right here. So Chevron, if we look at the, I'll tell you what, let's get rid of the previous day's highs and lows. We don't need that. So if we go to, is it the weekly or the daily we're looking at? Yeah, so if we go to the weekly chart right here, it's another ABCD. So there's A, B, C, D right here. So when price closed above it right there, above the blue line, that's set up in motion that we're looking for it going to hit up the white line up here but obviously that didn't happen so price came back down from that high hit the 23.6 right there and that's where it puts the current exit at around or it's a, it's the current exit at the 1.146 which is 204 dollars and at 55 cents uh, but if price continues to go back down and hits the 50 percent retracement at 106.53 then we move the exit up to the closing bar high which is right around here at around 186.13 and if price completely, if Chevron completely craters and goes down to the 1.146 the other way at $8.50, then the exit moves to the 23.6 level, $146.59. So this is a trade I am long in right now where I do have my exits closer to around 200 or so to get out for it. But if price goes back down, it's closer to the 50, I'm going to start adding on to my trade right there. And then, you know, when anything that gets lower down in here. If it keeps on going lower, I'm going to keep adding and adding to it because one great thing about Chevron is it provides a good dividend, I think around 4%. So the way I trade dividends and crypto is more, is in a longer term time frame where for my futures, it's all day and swing trading for it. And so with Chevron, um, since it provides a good dividend as well, even if you have to hold on to it for a year or longer, um, once a quarter, they're going to pay you to hold on to that stock and 4% yield is pretty good for it right there. So you get a little money from that. And then, you know, when it goes up and hits the profit target, you'll get money for that. So very bullish on Chevron right here. So I'm thinking unless 
the the oil and gas market completely tanks right here. I'm looking for a Chevron to um, continue to bullish trend bullish trend up up into the uh, 200s, and yeah, that'd be all time high for them as well. So we'll see what happens, especially with the presidential election here in the U.S. coming up um, in a little while. And then, last but not least, here is old Bitcoin. So, one thing I want to talk about Bitcoin is this is something I've noticed that has only worked in Bitcoin. So I was looking for it on the S&P 500, and I, for the long term for it, I didn't see the correlation. Same thing with oil, but for Bitcoin, it has worked. So whenever you get these five wave moves right here, see zero, one, two, three, four, five, right up here, you put this curve right here, that curve right there on points zero and points four. And then every time after we had the five wave move or the five wave move hit and there was a break from the curve from putting on points zero to points four, eventually that's when price started the next trend down. So you can see for this first one right here, it's like right when it broke, yes, the trend started here to the downside. Uh, and then we had this other one, here's another five wave move. So we have point zero, point four, here it broke the curve right here and then and then the five way moves already is solidly in place because how to get it is you just draw it from point zero to point three and then when price hits 1.146 that's where it solidifies that it's in a five way move right there and so price but it can of course keep going higher which it did but then when price broke right there it was only one two three more weeks before we had a big move back down and then here we have this move right here zero one two three four five so when price, so when price, let's see here, the fifth point was right here, which was outside of the curve right there. So it hit it right there. So that was solidified that the five-way move was in place right there. Still went up a little bit more, you know, one, two, three, four more weeks. And then we had a big, we had the big pullback down over here. And so currently, let's see where we are currently in Bitcoin. Oh, look what's happened. There's the zero, one, two, three four we are on the fifth point right there and you know if price goes up we'll move the fifth point over here but it's no big deal but the bigger deal is price broke the curve right there and now we've had one two three four so you know price for bitcoin is around its all-time high but it has broke the curve so i'm looking for another big sell-off in bitcoin here coming up here at least in a couple weeks i would say and so i've gotten out of all of my positions on um, any of the crypto i was in i was in um, bitcoin and either in ethereum or litecoin i don't know it was a couple months ago it was one of those two but when price hit around the 1.146 which is around 54 55,000, that's one of my older videos i was saying um that Price can continue to go up higher, but that's when I was going to start looking to get out of my Bitcoin position right here. So I think when price got up around the 60s or so, that's when I got out. So obviously missed a little bit of the, more of the run up, but hey, it's fine because I was I think I was in here around 30, 40 thousand for my average price for it. And especially now that price has broke the curve line right there, I'm definitely looking for a um, big move down in Bitcoin. And so what we look for it in the retracement for Bitcoin is we just draw from points zero up here to wherever point five ends up. And the exit we're looking for is the 50% retracement right there for it to mean that the five wave move for bit for um, Bitcoin retracement is over. So we're looking for at least go down to a 44,670 if the price remains up here, right up there. Now for some of the other ones, price has gone a lot lower. Like if we look at this one right here, See, price hit the 50%, which signified that the five-way move was over. But it went all the way down, look right here, in between the 1.146 and 1.414 before it moved up. Then for this one right here, it just went down in between the 50 and the 61.8 level before it continued its five-way move up. And this one right here, I think, went down to the 88.6% line. So this one went down to yeah, 88.6 right on it before it started to move up. So minimum we're looking for from just based upon the other moves it's done is down here 44,670 and then the major move down will be all the way down here at 6,240 ish level. So the earliest I would be looking to get in would be around the you know the mid 40,000s right here. So that's my warning to everyone right now, you know, if if if, like I said, I've already sold out of all my Bitcoin and I really think we're going to get 
a um, another good good move down here, which will create a great buying opportunity. It's just um, you know a block to my profits, and I hope everyone out there is uh, being safe with their profits. Uh, and then let's talk about Ethereum real quick because Ethereum is actually in a short setup, which kind of coincides with um, Bitcoin, which when Bitcoin does have that move down, it's going to move all the other markets down. So the X that we're looking for for this ABC trade here in Ethereum is, what is that, $1,071. So it's currently at $3,709. So we're looking for a nice size drop here in Ethereum. And then last but not least, Litecoin is really interesting because it is providing a nice long signal right here using the inside pitchfork because, uh, let's see here, Zero, one, two, three, four. Yeah, this is one we want right here. So using the weekly chart right here, zero actually was a daily chart right there. One, two, three, four. So then we just draw the pitchfork on two, three, and four. And then when the price closed above this teal line right here, which was on this bar right here, and the original X that we're looking for was way up here, this red line up here, but that didn't happen. So we put the Fibonacci onto it. And when price came back at the 23.6, we're looking at the 1.146 to be the exit, but it came down here and hit the 50. So we're looking at the close of that green bar high at around 108.95 to be the exit. So, you know, this is something I am looking at getting long in right here, but with the moving bitcoin that i'm expecting to happen here pretty soon i think i'm just going to hold off and wait for price to come back down you know in the 60s you know maybe even to the four, around 48 dollars because if it does that then the exit moves right here to um 97 dollars which would still be you know it'd be a double up to getting down right here so could get in right now but i think i am going to wait because i want to see um you know the bitcoin move happen and then when that happens uh getting lower uh, at a better level for this litecoin long trade so anyways that's it thanks have a great weekend